In this video, we will continue to look at operations with files. We're going to look at reading data from an existing file, and this one is quite a large file. So as you can see from the code, the comments on the screen, this program requires a file dictionary of four-letter words, which is called dictionary four-letter words.txt. This is actually taken from a Scrabble dictionary, and this, uh, this file contains over 4,000 words. And uh, these are all, um, this is not a complete dictionary, but it is a dictionary of all four-letter words. So we'll take a look at that uh, shortly. So this is a big file. Uh, we are going to open up the file, and we're going to read in the data and print some of that data to the screen. Uh, first, though, we need to make sure that we have the file located in a folder where we can get to it. So I will use the temp folder. Now, I'm going to bring in the dialog box here for files. And you can see that in the temp folder, and I've got several things. So here is the dictionary of four-letter words that I'm going to use in this program. And if we open that up, then what we would see is something like this. All right, so let me bring that in. So here we have a large file, and you can see it contains a lot of four-letter words. Each one is uh, separated by, from the other by space. And the way that this prints out is we have uh, several words per line. But the main thing is here, they, they are separated by at least one space in, uh, in the line here. So this is what the file looks like. If you, um, if you want to run this program, then you'll need the file. So please check the notes that go with this video, and I'll provide a link where you can download this file and use it in your program. Now, let's continue. We've uh, taken a look at the file. So we want to open it up, and we want to read the data from that file. Here are the variables. I'm going to read in string information. All those words were strings. So they weren't numbers. They're string information, string type. I'm going to count them. So I've got a unsigned integer to count how many words there are. And later in, in the program, we'll do a little tiny application that uses the file. So I'm going to have you uh, type in a letter, and then we are going to go through the file and print out all the words that begin with that letter. Getting to the file part of this, since we're reading an existing file, then we need to declare our file pointer to be of type ifStream. So here I've declared in file as the variable, and it's type ifStream. So that allows us to input data from an existing file. Then we have some comments that just say we want to open the dictionary, and this is done in the usual fashion. We have to use our file pointer in file.open. Then in parentheses, we list the complete pathway, and I've stored it on the C drive. Again, I'm running Windows. So uh, C drive colon slash then it's in the temp folder for me. And then the name of this is dictionary, okay, underscore, four underscore letter words dot txt. All right, so if I spell that correctly, and I typed it correctly, then this will open up the file. As always, we need to make sure that the file opened. So let's put our if test here. So as usual, we have if not in file. Then we want to output a message that the file did not open. So C out, lowercase c, C out, okay, double quote, error, period, could not open. And this time I know it's a dictionary, so I'm just going to say I'm going to could not open the dictionary if something failed with my end line here. Then, uh, again, using Microsoft Visual Studio on Windows, I need to pause to make the, the window stay on screen so I can read it. So we have system pause. Then I'm going to do a return with an error code of 1. So I've done this already in uh, previous videos uh, when, I've, when I've talked about uh, how to handle files. So I just did that quickly. 
And if you've seen the previous videos, you know why we need to do that. If we did happen to open the file successfully, I want to get a message to that effect. Okay, so double quote, file opened for input. So that tells me that the file opened correctly and my, I'm good to go with my program. So those are the mechanics then of, of opening an existing file. So you need to declare the file pointer, you need to do the open statement, and then check with the if statement to make sure it worked. Now, we are going to read one word at a time and just write that out to the screen. Well, you can see already that it's a very big file, so the output screen is going to be pretty full. And I'm also going to write out several words per line so that it doesn't become tremendously long. All right, <clears throat> so the way I do that is I'm going to use a loop. Okay, We don't want to uh, have to write 4,000 lines to read in each word. We want to just have a loop and read each one and print it out. So our loop is just going to be a while loop. But just prior to the while loop, I'm going to read in the first word. So remember, if you're reading from a file, use the file pointer, and then you want to use a variable that is the correct type. So I'm using the string type word for this one. So I'm going to read in one word, then I'm going to go into the loop. And I'll explain why I did this, uh, why I read the first word in before the loop here in just a few minutes. Now we have the while loop, while not in file dot EOF, set of parentheses. So this is a flag that lets us know when we reach the end of the file. So this will return true in when we reach the end of the file. It returns false if we have not. Inside the loop, I want to count the words, and I've read the first one out here, so I'll go ahead and an increment count. Do a count plus plus. And then I'm going to write out the word to the screen. So I'm going to do a C out, and I know that each one of these words is four letters, so if I do a set width to five, that means I'll have five spaces in my output field that will give me a space between each word. And I'm not going to put an inline here. I'm, I'm going to print the word, of course, but then I'm not going to do an inline because I want several words per line. After I have printed 15 words, then I do want to print an end line. So I'm going to put this little if statement in here. So if the count modulus 15 is equal to 0, and then in that case, I want to write out an end line. Otherwise, I'm not going to write the end line out. So I need to see out end line there. Then, after I have written out my words, I want to read in the next one. So then I can just use the same in file statement here, and I'll place it down there. All right, so then this is going to read through the dictionary one word at a time. It will count them, and then it will print each one out to the screen, but we print 15 per line. In case you haven't seen the modulus operator, let me briefly explain what that does. Um, whenever you use the modulus operator, then that means that we get the remainder of something. Okay, so for example, let's say that the count is 20. Okay, so if the count is 20, 20 modulus 15, that gives me a remainder of 5. So 20 is divided by 15 once with a remainder of 5. Okay, if count is 15, then 15 modulus 15, there's no remainder. So that gives me this, the number zero. So each time count reaches a multiple of 15, then this will be true. Okay, so at 15, it's zero. At 30, 30, uh, 30 divided by 15 is two, evenly with the remainder of zero. Okay, 45 divided by 15, three, remainder of zero. So whenever the remainder is zero, then I want to print an end line. So in effect, this allows me to print 15 words per line. Print 15 
words per line. That's what that does. Then um, we have just a C out statement here, and then we print out the total number of words that we counted. And to be complete, we close the end file, and then we end the program. All right, so let's compile and run the program at this point, and then we'll come back in and add a little application to this. Now the program's running. Here is the output. Okay, so our file was open for input, so that tells us that we did open the file correctly. That's, that's always good to know. Then, inside the loop, we are reading and printing out the words, and here you can see that the words are printed to the screen. If you count those, you'll have 15 per line. And since we have 4,000 of them, we have a lot of lines. Okay, so uh, here you can see all the words, all the way up to the one at the end. Okay, now, that shows that we have read the dictionary and we, we counted the words. So we had 429 words in a dictionary as well. So that shows then how you can read a file that's uh, pretty large and then you can process the data. In this case, we weren't really doing much to process the data. We just wanted to print it out. That proved that we could open up a file and that we could read the data from the file. And in this case, the data are all words. Now, let's modify the program so we can do a little work with this uh, dictionary. After we have printed out all the words and we've done this, then we don't want to close the file just yet. What I'd like to do here is to allow us to enter a letter and then we will go through the dictionary and we'll print out all the words that begin with that letter. Okay, so let's do a little C out statement here. Okay, double quote, enter a letter. And I will print all words starting with that letter, end line. Then we want to read in a letter, so we can do CN, and I have the character variable letter defined up above. Now, we need to go through the dictionary, and we need to find all the words that begin with that letter. All right, then let's do that. Lee, uh, we will need our while loop again. So it will be similar to what I have here. So I'm just going to copy this loop. I'll copy it, and I'll paste it here. And we'll modify it a little bit. All right, so if we want to look for the words that begin with a particular letter, then we need to read in the word, and we need to keep going. Um, this time, if we, want, we don't want to count all the words. We just want to count the words that begin with that letter. So let's, um, let's modify this a little bit. Let's add an if statement here. So, okay, if the letter is equal to um, two, two equal signs. Okay, if letter is equal to the word at position zero. Now, <clears throat> this is going to give us the first letter of the word. So if we read in a W for the uh, letter we're looking for, then we want to just check the first letter to see if it matches the letter we typed in. So we are not looking at the whole word, we're just looking at the first letter that's what the at will do. Then, if that is true, let's count. Let's move our curly brace down first. And we'll paste it in here. Alrighty, so if the letter matches the first letter of the word, we'll count it. Then we will print it out, and again, we'll print 15 words per line. So that will do just fine here. Then we'll read in the next word. So now we have this if statement inside the loop, and the while loop is going to let us go through the entire dictionary till we get to the end, and then afterwards we're done. Okay, so now let's print out, see out, okay, double quote, there were, then we'll print out the count. That's how many words of that letter we found. So there were that many words beginning 
with letter, and then I'll print out the letter. Let's put a space there. End line. And then we're done. We'll close the file, and then we'll terminate the program. Great. So now let's compile and run this program. I discovered an error when I ran the program, so there's no need showing you the error, the, showing the output, but I'll show you the error. Uh, inside the loop, I'm incrementing count again, but count was incremented up there in the first loop when we were counting all the words. So when I want to count all the words that began with a certain letter, I want to start count at zero again. So I need to reset count to zero here. Okay, count is equal to zero. Otherwise, I'm going to have uh, 4,029 from the count up here, and then this will keep adding letters or adding counts to the words here. So I don't want to do that. So go back and make sure you reset count to zero. Now then, let's compile and run the program. Now we have the program running correctly. So we have uh, all the words printed from the first part. Then we're here. Enter a letter, and I'll print all the words that begin with that letter. Well, okay, let's just enter the letter A. And there are zero words beginning with the letter A. There's something wrong somewhere. Let's run the program again. Let's try a different letter. Here's the output. Now, let's try a different letter. Let's try the letter D. How about that? There are zero words beginning with the letter D. Okay, clearly there's something wrong with the program. What is wrong with this? So let's take a look. And this was done on purpose to show you what is happening. Let's look at the program again. We open up the file, then we read each word, and then we print it out until we reach the end of the file. So while we're going through the dictionary the first time with this while loop, we keep going until we get to the end of the file. Then we move past that, and we want to do our little application here, where we're looking for the words that begin with a certain letter. When I get to this while loop, then the dictionary is at the end of the file. So it's, it's going to be true. This end file EOF is going to come back as true, not true as false. So we skip over this altogether, and we get zero for the count. Well, what's the problem here? We're at the end of the file. How do we get back to the beginning of the file? And, of course, there's a way to do that. There really are a couple of ways you could do that. One thing we could do is after we have finished here, then we could close the file and we could reopen it. That's one way, but it's not an elegant way to do that. Instead, there's a more formal way that we can um, uh, reset the file. So I want to show you that. And it's kind of a weird thing. We use our, our pointer, in file dot S-E-E-K-G, special function, seek G. And then we have two parameters. We put zero, which means it's going to go back to the beginning, index number zero, the first position in the file. And we have this input-output system flag we need to set. And it's IOS double colon BEG for beginning. This will reset the file to the beginning. It resets the dictionary to the first word. So let's put a comment here. This is important. Okay, reset file to the beginning. Now, once we've done that, this very important line, once we reset the file, then we can go through the entire dictionary again. So we'll start with the first word, and we'll go all the way through. All right, so that's how we can solve the problem. Whenever you're reading through a file, then you will eventually get somewhere within the file, or you'll get to the end of it. If you want to use that file again, then you'll have to reset it. And that's the technique that you use to reset the file. Very important. Now let's compile and run the program again. Now the program is running. So we have printed out the words. Enter a letter. I will print all the words. So let's enter our letter, the letter A. Enter. And here are the words then that begin with the letter A. So you can see them. They're all printed here. One thing that I'm missing is I don't see the count. 
I didn't print out the count. What happened to the count? Okay, I should be printing out there were count words beginning with the letter A or whatever. Now, there's an error. There's a subtle error in the program. Can you find where the error is? If you want to try to find what's going on, then I recommend that you go ahead, you know, pause the program, see if you can find the error. This will be good practice. This also shows you that I keep making errors all the time as well. So this is just common, a common thing that you'll do. Alrighty, well, if you do want to see the error, then I'll show it to you. So let me stop the program. Let's get this back up again, and I'll close it. Here's what's happening. Inside the loop, I want to read all the words till I get to the end of the file. Inside the loop, I have the if statement. So the this if statement here. So if the letter matches the word, then I do everything inside here. Okay, well, the thing that I'm doing inside there I didn't want to do or I shouldn't have done is to try to read in the next word. So I can't read in the next word unless this if statement is true. So if I'm trying to read in a word that starts with B or C or anything else, it isn't going to do that because it fails the test here depending on the letter I type in. So my program didn't get to this part here. So to correct it, I need to take this input statement, the in file word, out and put it outside the if statement down here. So now when I'm going through the loop, I will always read the word and then the if statement will just test the word here. In addition, after I have done all that, I'd like to see an end line here, just a formatting thing, so C out with an end, end line right there. And then we'll print out how many words there were. So there you go, that little error showed up, and not a bad thing. You should see errors and how to correct them as part of this process. So now let's stop the program. We'll stop the editing and compile and run the program. The program is running. Let's bring in the output. Enter a letter. I will print all the words starting with that letter. Okay, so let's use the letter B this time. Here are all the words that start with B. And this time, I did print out there were 262. So I did get out of the loop, and I printed out how many words there were beginning with the letter B. It didn't print out any of the other ones. So the program itself then, it was testing to see if the word began with the letter that we typed in up here, and it only dealt with the words that began with that letter. So this was a pretty simple program. This illustrates how you can work with a, a pretty large file, and the file would, containing a bunch of string data instead of numbers. And it also shows you how you can reset a file once you get to the end of it. So that's a highly important thing to remember. I think I've mentioned that about four times now. Um, then we did our application, and if you expand on this a little bit, then you could see that you could pretty easily make a spell checker so that if you typed in a four-letter word, or if you typed in four characters, then you could compare it to see if it's a word or not. So you can make a little spell checker for a four-letter words only. Um, anyway, after that, we printed out the result, and to be complete, we closed the file at the bottom, and then we terminate the program. So here's another example of how to input data from an existing file and also how to reset the file. So we've uh, gone long enough, so let's stop the video here.